Today we're back my ficus benjamina. That was originally three trees, but I've managed to fuse into this one big tree. And so far it's come a long way. If you haven't seen the previous video on this tree, you should go back and watch them. Anyway, last February it was clearly overgrown. It has plenty of moss and aerial roots, but they're fine for now. Right now, I just need to prune the top of it back. This tree is evergreen, so you're never going to see it without leaves. Which means you need to deal with it when it looks like this, which can be pretty intimidating. But it doesn't need to be. It's a long, slow process, but it's pretty simple once you get going. You just need to go in and deal with each branch individually. If I bring this bit of paper in, it will help you see what's going on. Straight away you can see that on this one branch here, there's a number of large leaves that are growing at the base of the side shoots. These are really not needed and just look kind of strange. They really block the view, so they just need to be removed. Normally I just remove these across the whole tree and it really opens things up and allows me to work out what I actually need to prune. Once they're gone, you can see this branch is long and has a number of side shoots. So now you can work out if it's too many and if you want to cut it back or not. Let me just remove a few more leaves here that are in strange places and then I can work out what actually needs to be done. So now I can see there's too many side shoots and I want to bring this back to just two. This means I've still got ramification, but I've also brought the size of the tree down. If I just keep doing this all over the tree for a number of years, I'll end up with a very dense and compact tree. Here I've gone through the whole tree and repeated what I just did with that first branch I showed you. Right here I'm removing a small branch that is growing inwards. It's nothing to worry about right now, but if I've let that develop, it's just going to look dreadful. So it's just best to remove it now. You kind of want all the branches growing outwards rather than in like that. But anyway, you can see this tree is a whole lot lighter now and opened up. And here you can see how much I removed. I'll show you the tree from a better angle, and then you can really see how much I pruned it. It can seem quite drastic to prune it this way, but it's very much two steps back, one step forward. In the long run, it's going to be much better for the structure. But there's still a lot of foliage. So it's only going to develop further from this. In March it started to bounce back from the pruning and their buds popping all over the place. It's also the start of spring, so I think it's time to get this tree repotted. The pot is a thin plastic pot, so you can tell by squeezing it that it's pretty full of roots. There's also a lot of aerial roots, so it looks like this tree had grown like crazy over the last year. I also haven't tried to grow the moss, it's just appeared on its own. It's actually pretty thick and I really need it out of the way to see what's going on so I just picked it all off which actually took a while. Once it's mostly gone I can try to get the tree out of the pot. Luckily it's pretty flexible since it's thin plastic so it's easy enough to remove the tree from the pot. But you can see it still want to hold on. If this had been a clay pot it would have been really jammed in there. When it comes out you can see it's grown a lot last year. That is a lot of roots there. But I did the usual thing of raking it all out which wasn't easy. It was pretty compact, but we got there in the end. And after a while, I was left with this. Which is just a crazy amount of roots. Although it's not too bad. There is one or two that are slightly thick. But for a ficus, this isn't bad. Usually they grow weird, thick roots that look like parsnips. I don't really see any of those, which is exactly what I want to happen.
pretty much all these roots are way too long. So I just started hacking them back. I just want them to sort of be about equal in length. So it's not too difficult to work out what to do. After a while I had the main root ball down to this, so it looks pretty good, but the real issue is now to sort out and untangle all the aerial roots. I just tried to keep as many as I could, I shortened a lot of them back and just tried to get them to grow straight down. Some of them were going in crazy directions, they started in one part of the tree and then ended up on a totally opposite side. I didn't like how they're all crisscrossed, so hopefully now I can get them a little more straight looking. I think they look really cool, I'm actually a big fan of them. I then repotted it back into the same pot. I would have really liked to repot this into something different. Maybe something a little wider, but I haven't got the space. I think a wider pot would have allowed me to grow out some of the aerial roots, just a little bit wider which would have made it look more like one of those banyan trees you see in nature. But for now, I'll just have to work with what I've got. I think it still looks pretty good, and with time, and more importantly space, I can work on spreading this tree out. Here it is in April after the repot. There's not much going on. You can see some of the lower leaves have went yellow. I guess the lack of roots, along with the fact they are quite old leaves, means they want to drop now. I'm not worried about that. If I just move angles here, you can see I managed to keep a lot of the aerial roots. And I think the main structure is coming along nicely. Still has a long way to go, but it's looking good so far. In May, it's pretty much filled back in. When a ficus is happy, it will grow like crazy. So this one seems fine about that repot. In June, I actually thinned some of the larger top branches out. I felt like they were maybe getting a little too strong, and the balance was starting to get lost. So I took a few key branches out, and this is what I was left with. Not the most drastic change, but I think in the long run that will have helped out a lot. In July, it looks pretty bushy and it seems like the moss has fully grown back. Once again, I didn't encourage that, it just grows on its own. In August, it's actually really dense with growth, so I trimmed it back hard, exactly like I did at the start of the video. So it looks very drastic, but it's important. By September, it's pretty much already grown back in. I think you can really get what I meant by wanting to put this in a wider pot. I just think it needs a little bit more space to stretch out and develop. But we'll have to wait, it will get its space eventually. In October, it's pretty much slowing down for the year. It's growing really well. I'm sure it's put more growth on the previous years, but that's fine, it's still done good this season. I do think this tree has a lot of potential. In November, it's definitely stopped growing. I have lowered the light quite a lot at this point, so it might put on a little growth over winter, but probably not much. It's pretty much gonna be relaxing now until spring when I'll just start cranking up the light levels again and hopefully it will explode. And here we are now, where it seems happy enough and hopefully it does the same this year.
Thanks for watching. See you next time.